Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be continuing our moment frame design series by looking at the connection design. So in the previous video, we uh, set up our moment frame. We had W14 by 68 columns with the W18 by 76 beam. We applied our loads, and then we checked the members uh, for axial, flexor, shear, and then combined forces to design the members of our moment frame. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the connections here and checking it for all the uh, different items that we need to, to make sure that we can transfer that moment between the beam and the column. So, right, we have our beam connected to our column there with sort of a, a, a typical uh, welded flange moment connection. We have our moment MU of the beam, and then we have our axial forces um, tension and compression in the top and bottom flange of the beam that need to be connected into the column. So we're going to be using AIC 360 chapter J10, which is flanges and webs with concentrated forces. Um, and then we'll also be using the panel zone shear uh, uh, section in that chapter as well. And just uh, to point out, if you are in a seismic zone, right, there are additional requirements um, in the seismic uh, manual. So please take a look at that if you have to consider those uh, seismic checks as well. Um, the different things we'll be checking, right, we'll be checking the flange local bending, uh, web local yielding, web local crippling, web side sway, side sway buckling, and web compression buckling. And we did a detailed uh, video about these different checks. Uh, we'll link that in the description below. You can take a closer look at all of these different checks uh, if you want some more information on them. So, and the last thing we'll be checking is web panel zone shear, uh, shear of the column. So let's take a look at our problem statement, right? We already set this up before, but let's just look at some of the highlights. So our beam forces, we have a moment of 97.6 kip foot, a shear of 19.6 kips, and an axial of 8 kips. And then our column forces, we have the same moment there, 97.4 kip feet, a shear of 8.1 kips, and an axial of 20.5 kips. Um, these are some of the properties that we're going to need to uh, use for our design. So we'll just put those up there. We'll, we'll reference these again when we come back um, into the calculations. And then the one thing we're going to calculate before we move forward is just what the tension and compression forces are in the beam flange, because that's what's going to impart the force onto the column. So we take our moment, um, we divide it by the depth to the center line of each flange, the top and bottom flange. So we have 97.6 kip feet uh, times 12 for a unit conversion. And we divide that by the depth of the beam, 18.2 inches, minus the flange width, which was, which gets us uh, to the center of the flanges of 0.68 inches. And that gives us a plus or minus uh, tension compression of 67 kips. So we'll be using 67 kips um, tension or compression onto the column, and that's what we'll be using to uh, check our moment connection here. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook, and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now, so we can go ahead and open up the 15th edition of AISC. Uh, we'll go into our connection design, and then we'll go ahead and click on the flanges with concentrated forces, and we'll click on the panel zone shear, and then click continue. Okay, so we have a few things here that we need to select in order to get our design started. So first thing is the load direction. Um, this is kind of set up for more of a generic, um, you know, concentrated loads on flanges. So for us, the more critical case is going to be compression. So we'll start with that. We can come back and check tension, um, but compression checks more uh, more failure modes in this connection. So we'll select com compression. The connection type is a moment connection. Um, our compression flange bracing does not apply to a moment connection. It would only be if you have a sort of a, a point load on top of a beam or, or a plate attached to the top of beam and you want to check the, the flange and the web uh, to that load. But for a moment connection, it does not apply. Equal force on opposite flange, right? This would be if you had a beam on both sides, but we don't have that condition. We only have it on one side only. Distance from the supporting member end to the concentrated force. So for us, since we have a cantilevered column, it's going to be basically from the top down to the bottom flange where it attaches, which is 18.2 inches. Our length of bearing is going to be the width of the beam flange that's going to impart the force onto the column. So our length of bearing for this will be 0.68 inches, which is the thickness of the beam flange. Then we want to go and um, add some parameters in here for our supporting member, so our column in this case. So our depth of column is 14 inches. Our clear distance between flanges is going to be 10.875 inches. Our K length, or that, that rolled uh, section of the flange between the flange and the web, is 1.31 inches. Width of flange is 10 inches. Thickness of the loaded flange is 0.72. 
thickness of the web is going to be 0 0.415 and our unbraced length will be 144 uh, that's just the height of the column and there's one other parameter that popped up here uh, which is the shape factor it has to do with the type of members in the connection um, and for a wide flange section it's just going to be a 1.0 so we'll leave that as a 1.0 and then what we need to do is enter in our demands so remember we're taking our forces from our analysis model so we don't want, don't want any load combinations uh, the moment demand in the supporting member um, that is going to be uh, for the column which is required to determine one of the factors c sub r um, and so for us the moment in the column is going to be let's look here uh, 97.4 and then our concentrated load right this is the load on the flange which we already calculated um, to be 67 kips okay so now we've got that information entered right we can take a look at our failure mode so like I said before, we're going to check uh, web local yielding, web local crippling, side side, side sway buckling, and compression buckling. And we also have a calculation note up here um, that because we have compression selected, it's not checking the flange local bending. Um, so we will check that uh, at the end, um, but we will we'll ignore that for right now. So we can go through our steps, right? We take a look at our web local yielding, um, which has to do with the uh, yield strength of the flange, or the web, excuse me, and then the thickness of the web. And based on this distribution, right, we determine that our capacity um, is 150 kips. We look at the local crippling, right, which gives, it gives us 175 kips. Our side sway buckling does not apply because this is a moment connection, so we don't use that one. And same with compression buckling, because we don't have uh, loads on opposing sides of the column, we don't check that one either. So we are controlled by web local yielding, and we have a D over C of 0 0.45, so we are okay. If we did want to just toggle over and check the tension, we can do that, right? And it will populate the flange local bending, um, which is 145.8 uh, kips. Um, and gives us a slightly higher DCR of 0 0.46. So I guess this does control for our design. So the next thing we can do is jump over to the panel zone shear calculation. Right, we have a few more things to input here. Uh, we're going to assume that the uh, inelastic panel zone deformation is not accounted for in the analysis. Our depth of column again is going to be 14 inches. Our uh, width of the column flange is going to be 10 inches. Our thickness of the column flange 0.72 and our web thickness is uh, 0 0.415 and then our demand again no load combinations our axial demand of the column is 20.5 kips and then our web shear uh, is going to be the uh, the force from the flange of 67.5 uh, and then we're going to subtract off um, our our uh, our reaction or our shear in the column which is eight kips. So we have uh, 67.5 um, kips uh, minus the eight gives us 59.5. Excuse me, that's 67 kips, not 67.5. So 67 kips minus eight gives us 59 exactly. And so we can go through and check our web panel zone shear, right? So we got the gross area of the column our yield strength of the column, PY. We apply this alpha factor based on LRFD or ASD. Um, and then we can calculate our panel zone shear capacity of 156 kips, which is sufficient. So based on these calculations, we don't need to add any stiffener plates. We don't need to add any doubler plates. Um, however, in practice, you would most likely add those things, at least the stiffener plates for continuity. So we hope you enjoyed this moment connection design and calc book. Um, stay tuned for part three of this moment frame design series where we check out the foundation. So we'll see you next time.